from the front pages of your newspaper headlines to the in front of your television screens. We take you around the world, the captivating of news. Welcome to the headliner. I'm your host, Monica Chanda, and it's another week of great news as we delve into some of those headlines and get to appreciate what the stories were separating the noise from the facts. And this week, we start off with some of those headlines, but we also have a very captivating story that actually got people talking. The political analysts, the who's who's, and everyone in between. It was that political debacle, and we will be taking you through that and more in the second segment with one renowned journalist, a news editor, and she will be captivating us with her analysis of that particular story. In the third segment, join us for the editor's choice and we have sports journalist Anashe Murombezi. This is the headliner. Let's get straight into those news headlines and today on the headliner, let's kick start uh, with the daily news. Wednesday, it was tagged. Uh, Triple C's infighting hits rock bottom as the party was a reach point of no return. So the chaos continues uh, with uh, the coalition, the citizens of Coalition for Change, uh, chaos ravaging uh, the camp, uh, plunged new depth after rivals, factions, fielded candidates for the next month's keenly watched parliamentary and council by elections. We also have the news day tagged fresh headache brewing, and that's for Chamisa. So the Citizen Co uh, Coalition for Changes uh, facing fresh hurdle after its Secretary General, that's uh, Singezo Chabangu. Now he threatened legal action, and uh, if some of you have been reading the news of late, he threatened that legal action that is against, uh, of course, uh, opposition party, which successfully fielded nomination of a candidates ahead of December 9th by election. And we have the Herald, that's uh, the Herald of the 9th, uh, uh, Wednesday, sorry for that, that's Herald on Wednesday, uh, Zimbabwe Fuel Facility Peaks, Regional Interest as His Excellency, the President, Dr. Emerson Mnangagwa, commissioned 7.3 million United States dollars plant. And oh, we actually get to see Zimbabwe showing some positive developments. Uh, that is one of the great achievements even under the Second Republic and a true and testimony to the National Development Strategy won uh, priority areas. And also Zimbabwe uh, reading uh, to lure Saudi investors. And this is uh, also fulfilling the president's mantra of engagement and re-engagement. So that in the Herald. Lastly, we have the Edge Metro. And on Thursday, former minister Mkupe faces jail term. And this comes after the former minister of finance, a fuel scam of sorts and uh, the bid backfiring uh, terribly. So the Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission not leaving any stone unturned as it actually gets to curb corruption in all institutions, private and public. So that was also another story that definitely made the headlines. And the headliner obviously bringing those stories that you probably missed, but not so quite missed because we always make sure that we headline the top stories. This has been the sec uh, first segment. Join us in the second as we get to tackle that political debacle. <laughs> Welcome to the third and final segment of the headliner. Grab yourself a drink of water or something to chew on because this segment is the editor's section. Uh, we get to speak to some of the journalists, some of the editors. And this week we have sports journalist Anashe Murombezi who's taking us around the world of sports. Anashe, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. Taking you in the world of sport as usual. I'm, ha I'm happy to be here. Well, let's talk about the stories that captured your attention this week. Okay, you know, it, were, it has been a busy week for us, like on the sports desk. And you know the bit, if you have passion, you get to work with excitement. Because um, I'm just happy for Ngezi Platinum. 
um, they are ready to get there, like to get their maiden title in the Castle Laga Premier Soccer League. So there have been a lot of issues around sport, but mostly football on Sportlight, mm. because we got to talk about the infrastructure, what has been happening between the ministry, um, the CIFA in terms of uh, fixing the stadiums. We also have uh, the Warriors. We are back in the international scene. The Warriors are actually preparing for the World Cup qualifiers. So it has been a quite um, a busy week for us. Definitely a mouthful of sports. Let's start off with Ngezi Platinum. I know for many of us, we are thinking, we don't want the title to be in Harare or Blaya for the first time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Not the mm -hmm, first time mm -hmm, quite, mm -hmm. but then it's always interesting to see the cup title moving away from those two provinces. And this time around, we might see the other side of Platinum taking that title. Quite interesting because you know when we get into the Castle Laga Premier Soccer League, everyone will be looking at the three traditional giants. We're talking about Dynamos, we're talking about Kingese Platna, mm. sorry, um, Caps United, we're talking about Highlanders. But this time it's going to have a new face. We're going to have the new champions. Although, yes, we had um, the title back in uh, Zishavane when we have the defending champions, FC Platna, but it is uh, quite interesting that we have. Uh, an opponent that is coming in uh, way to from um, Ngezi Platinum, away from uh, uh, Mondoro Ngezi, and mm. we just look at how the title is going to transform going to uh, Mondoro Ngezi. Looking at FC Platinum, uh, Ngezi Platinum, they have been doing very well. Um, the season actually started like when we talked about um, uh, Caps United enjoying the pole position, there's been uh, an interchange, uh, Rari Giants, Dynamos coming in. We even saw Highlanders. We even saw FC Platinum promising to be uh, very good finishers, mm -hmm. like uh, trying to uh, push to defend their title. But now we have uh, Ngeze Platinum. Since they were um, promoted in the top flight since 2016, they only won uh, the Chibugu Super Cup. And now we can uh, actually certain to say my, they might be uh, chasing uh, the league and cup double because there's also Chibuku uh, Super Cup as well coming in the finals. We see Ngezi Platinum uh, taking on Dynamos. Mm -hmm. So you might never know that Ngezi might actually be pushing to um, chase for the Chibuku Super Cup and both with the Castle Laga Premier Soccer League. Because right now they're mm -hmm. enjoying the summit of the league. They are at 60 points. And they only need three more points. Yes, they just need a, a win. And now we have, they're left with the three games away mm -hmm. and they, they can actually get the title if um, they can actually secure three points. And uh, over the weekend, they will actually face a Simba Bora. You might never know. Uh, they have to uh, play uh, very well so that they can actually, this weekend, claim the title. Okay. So you actually spoke about some of those traditional giants. I know Highlanders started up uh, pretty, uh, pretty good. Uh, they had quite an unbeaten run. Unfortunately, things just took a turn in their camp. And um, we know Barber Fields is quite the stadium, especially when it comes to uh, that kind of fan base support. They yeah. also had uh, their, their coach, Bruto, having that uh, top job. Do you feel that probably was one of those, um, it probably caused the, that shake up for Highlanders? him having to take up that uh, job and his focus is no longer on Highlanders itself? Absolutely. Um, I would actually feel the same way, like to think like the way that you have um, said it or, you know, Baltimore Brito was named uh, the mm. Warriors coach. Mm. And also, you know, after 18 months of suspension, we are back in the international scene. Oh, we are back to participate in the international football. So there has been a lot to be done, bringing new faces in the Warriors team, um, trying to uh, get the structures, uh, figure out the best players we can have, getting local players, you know, uh, looking at all the teams in the local football in the Castle Laga Premier Soccer League to get the best players. We can actually make up a solid squad for the Warriors. So it has been a great job. It has been hectic for him, like, uh, in, in a way, I would say it. Mm. So for him to actually manage the team at the same time, uh, manage um, the local club, Highlanders, they have been, they, they slammed because they were actually up there promising to be title contenders. But it seems as if uh, they were actually sliding down. But still, given the fact that Ngeza Platinum has failed to grab all three points left, if they can actually uh, take nine points, 
uh, for from uh, the three matches left, they can have the chance. Mm. I know we are trying to move away from focus on the three top traditional giants. Mm -hmm. We're talking of your Highlanders, your Dynamis, your Caps United. But then Dynamis itself, uh, Dynamis um, is actually second on the log. Yeah. And uh, pretty much uh, they gave us some great fo uh, football. Um, they were also running contenders uh, for the title league. And it will probably take a miracle for them to probably come up with some sort of miraculous, um, you know, p a pole position. But then that's highly unlikely. Given how Ngezi Platinum played and looking at Dynamis, uh, how would you say the two teams fared in terms of their structure? In terms of, um, because one of the aspects that has been uh, probably disturbing in terms of our domestic league mm -hmm, strikers, mm -hmm. a lot of the teams don't have very good strikers. Looking at Ngezi Platinum itself, how would you describe it? Okay, um, you know, in as much as our, our league has been interesting, we actually found out that um, there's been a lack, lack of goals. Mm. For football fanatics who actually know the beautiful game, you would actually want to count um, the goals. You would actually want to see strong strikers. True. Like taking, for instance, like shifting to the English Premier Soccer League, the top goal scorer right now is uh, Manchester City striker Ellen Haaland with 36 goals. And right now we have Obrio Sibanda from uh, Blauer Chiefs who tops the charts with 11 goals. Mm. So you'd find out that um, in terms of strikers, there is uh, some, something that needs to be done in terms of uh, building and bringing uh, strong strikers. Mm. I know Anashi has a lot of uh, sports work to be catching up on, uh, but then quickly. We know we have the Warriors who will be going to Rwanda. And um, how, are, how are our chances? How would you probably put our chances, especially pitted against uh, some of these teams and coming from a suspension itself? You know, um, we are coming from an 18 month suspension mm -hmm. and um, we were supposed to get ready at that time when we were suspended. Because now we are not feeling a lot of pressure like uh, gathering the team to actually be competitive mm. to show that we are actually back. But um, looking at uh, the squad provided by the coach, um, I just uh, hope all the players will just uh, come on board, those who have been called for national duty, to come and uh, contribute something that would um, make us certain that the Warriors are actually back in the game. Because if you look at the, the likes of a marvelous Nakamba, Marshall Moneti, um, a lot of foreign best players, even local uh, local players, the likes of uh, Frank McCarthy, mm. they have been doing well, like in terms of the play. So if they could actually transform that form into the national play, I think um, we have a chance. But oh, although yeah, there has been uh, a lot of um, issues to do with um, hosting uh, matches. You know, it's all good to actually host when you're on home ground. Mm. But um, we are away, away to Rwanda um, on the 15th of November. And four days later, we'll actually stay in Rwanda to host Nigeria. And you would try to find out how best can we actually take that support from home to rally behind the Warriors, to actually have that spirit to feel at home, even if we are at uh, the ground that doesn't belong to us. But we, we, we actually hope that the Warriors would deliver. Well, we would have loved them to be home ground, but home and away it is, the fan base continues. And maybe we should turn the third segment into a sports segment because after all, we are two sporting lovers and I think it would make for some great TV, but all the same. This has been the headliner, the third segment, and we're hosting sports journalist, Anashim Mrombezi. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. I wish we could even have more time to talk about these interesting issues. Absolutely. And if you are catching us on the headliner, don't forget, we are also on different uh, social media platforms. You can follow the conversations and make sure you never lose track of the headlines of the week. Until next time, and the crew behind the scenes, my name is Monica Chanda. Catch us once again on The Headliner. It's goodbye. <laughs>